this is the first conference that I've been back to in real life, and I have been staring at myself on a Zoom screen for years, and it is mind-numbing and awful. So I'm super you guys. I'm glad everybody's here. Hope you guys have been getting a ton of um, value out of everything so far. Um, my name is Lindsay Mann, and I am a realtor out of Denver, Colorado. I'm heading into my 21st year in real estate, which is absolutely bonkers. Real estate is the only job that I've actually ever had. So I started at 17 years old with what is now the largest home builder in the nation. And I started as a sales assistant and went and built the uh, very first online sales program for a builder in the United States. And from there, eventually worked my way up into uh, management. I always thought that my career path was going to be a division president for a national builder by the time that I was 35. Uh, and then the recession hit, and if you guys, how many people lived, lived through the recession in real estate? Yeah, so um, I pivoted to working in REO as a listing agent, and I was listing about $30 million a year for those several years there in distress assets for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and all of the uh, big major banks that were out there at the time. So absolutely crazy going from brand new homes and totally gorgeous to... Uh, listening insane. People are nodding their heads. They know. They, they remember. Yes. Looking back at that time, it's actually, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, it was a pretty scary job. I, uh, I was first eyes on the property for the bank, and so I, I just never know what I would walk into. Um, it could have been squatters. It could have been animals. We had no idea what condition the property would be in. One time we had a gentleman sequester himself in his basement with an AR-15 and we had to uh, sit outside for two days with the police <laughs> until they could get him to come out uh, very peacefully. So I have been all over the board and I've done all over the things in my career. My son, who's now 12, um, he'd just been born during the REO days and I would literally strap him to my chest in a carrier and we'd go everywhere together doing property inspections all over the state, and I kind of knew he had to stop coming along because he actually tried to call for his very first time in a crack house and went for a needle. So it was like, we can't do this anymore. Uh, so then as things, you know, always do in real estate, the second that you get your footing underneath you and you actually know what you're doing, things change, right? So the market started to shift and REO dried up, and I found myself wanting to go back into just residential retail real estate, and I've been there ever since. And I am now 38, and I never made it to division president, but I still work closely with most of the major builders across the country and REO asset management companies across the country. I'm top 1.5% of all realtors in the United States. Um, I've sold over 5,000 homes and almost a billion dollars in real estate in my career personally. Uh, and spent a, a good couple years as top 100 uh, agents in the country. So I've run everything from a team of about 30 to a very uh, highly leveraged group of me and, and just a few pieces of virtual assistant support. So I have been everywhere and all over the place. <laughs> um, and today we're going to talk about what I like to lovingly call fuck your big why or the culture of the big why. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, and I'm going to get super candid about my struggles with the big why and why this is something that is so important to me. So raise your hand if you know what the big why is or what the big why is supposed to be. Do we have people in the room that know what that is? Just a couple people? Okay. Um, so a big why is defined as your purpose, it's your personal cause, and it's supposed to be your sole driving belief. It's something that's super, super pervasive in most sales industries, and it's the idea of what is driving you every day to get up and, and do what you're supposed to be doing. There are thousands of classes and TED Talks and workshops and books and all kinds of things about how to find your big why, and I've been 
probably in all of them over the years. Um, it's supposed to be the thing that pushes us when we, we feel like we can't push ourselves anymore. It's supposed to be the thing that gets us up out of bed every single day. Um, it's the thing that's supposed to keep us up at night. It's supposed to be our passion. It's our legacy. If we accomplish our big why, it is supposed to bring us ultimate happiness. And if we don't accomplish our big why, then it means that we're failing because our big why just isn't big enough. Uh, it's a very interesting, really only a couple people in the room have ever taken a big Y workshop or heard of this. This is crazy to me. Okay. Um, I think that the big Y is, is actually really, really toxic. Uh, and it's because your big Y, the way that they teach this to us, is completely and totally external and completely and totally outside of us. And so today what we're, we're going to talk about is how to find a driver that actually pushes you to live a life that you want to live. In all of those millions of classes that I've sat and listened in on the big why, you will hear absolutely crazy stories. Um, you know, people are working to cure childhood cancer. They're working to uh, take a spouse who is ill on the last trip of their lifetime. These are really, really, really big things that people usually come up with. Um, and I've got dozens and dozens of journals over the years where I've scribbled and doodled and worked on big whys. Um, and most, of, most people I do uh, you know, know have some idea of what it is that they feel is driving them. Does anyone have a big why in this room that they feel like they could tell us? Can you shout it for us? That's a good one. Very, very good one. Okay. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. How many people would like to spend more time with their, with their kids? Yeah, that's a really good one, right? Um, so now I have to ask an extremely candid question. And what's really cool about the conference that we're in this, this weekend is that what Justin and the Sphere Rocket team have created for us is an extremely safe place. And in order for us to grow and challenge ourselves, we've got to show up truthfully and authentically. So we're going to get pretty real here today, and I'm going to tell you a lot about uh, my story, too. Are there people in the room who have no idea what they are driving for? You don't have a quantifiable reason, right? Raise your hands. Like, let's be honest. You don't have a quantifiable reason why. Like, you're like, I would like to make some money. Maybe I would go to Disneyland. Uh, but you don't really have a solid solid reason for why you're doing what you're doing. The problem with the big why, the way that I see it, again, it's, it's totally and completely external. It has nothing to do with you. For some reason, real estate has always been like a holy calling. People really treat it as if we are Attorneys saving people from prison for the rest of their lives or we're curing cancer. People get very emotionally invested in uh, real estate, right? It, it's absolutely crazy how wrapped up in people, um, in it, people get. And the problem with having a super big external why is that it's, it doesn't belong to you. Like, we're all driving for things that we have no idea what we want and we're all driving for things that we don't even know where they came from. It's someone else's idea of what success is, right? There's an actual psychological principle that's called cognitive dissonance. And cognitive dissonance happens when a person has emotional or physical distress or discomfort because they're holding conflicting beliefs inside themselves or inside their bodies. Cognitive dissonance has tons of symptoms like mental or emotional distress for no reason that you can figure out, having trouble making decisions, not trusting yourself, not being able to finish tasks, not sticking to the boundaries that you set to spend more time with your wife and your kids, right? Not being able to complete your goals. The crazy thing is that you can actually see cognitive dissonance on an MRI of the brain. 
So when someone is angry or they're upset or they're in emotional or physical pain, a part of their brain activates inside the MRI machine. And when you're in cognitive dissonance, so when you're doing something that isn't truly for yourself, that same part of the brain activates inside the MRI machine. I think we can all kind of agree that it has been a really rough couple years, right? It's been pretty crazy. Uh, please join me in raising your hand if over the last few years you've just felt like off kilter, unsure, you've had to revisit your priorities, you're burned out, you're just fucking empty, you have no idea like what's going on anymore. I mean, it's been honestly like a, a brutal last few years, you guys. Um, I think part of that is we're just not clear on what it is that's driving us. Uh, and we're living in this world every single day where we're confronting cognitive dissonance on a daily basis, right? So social media, right? You're constantly comparing your insides to other people's outsides. We're looking at other real estate agents saying that they're number one in everything. And if you pull their statistics, you're like, uh, maybe you were rated number one by your mom, but I'm not really sure like, where that came from, right? Um, you know, we're, we're looking at people's marriages who are perfect, whose children are perfect. People have zero problems, right? And that is cognitive dissonance because we believe then that there's something wrong with us because we're not matching up to that metric of what other people are doing. The crazy thing about this is if you really think about it, it actually just pushes us to have bigger whys because we have to have more perfect lives that we have to show off to other people. We've got to pour out more of ourselves so that when other people measure us, right, we're not found wanting. If we're authentic, it's really scary. Human beings were biologically built for companionship. And so the need to build our businesses and what we think is success around other people is natural and it's ingrained inside of our bodies. But the biggest battle that we'll ever fight is inside of us. And if we can't fight that battle and win that battle first, we can never win anything else again. So I'm gonna show you an actual example of what cognitive dissonance looks like and what you're losing and what you're risking when you're not in alignment with yourself. So I've got this uh, fancy bottle of Gatorade here, it's red. This cup represents me, it's my spirit, it's my soul, it's what I want, it's my life, it's what I, I need for myself. Uh, you know, it's what my family needs, all of those things. So I'm going to need a couple volunteers. So I'm going to need a couple people to raise their hands. And when I call on you guys, I want you to shout out something that's important to you, okay? And I'm, I'm going to take that on, and I'm going to use this to represent it. What's important to you? Okay, so your two-year-old goes into the bucket here. Who else? My new friend in the green. Yay! We met in the bathroom like girls always do. <laughs> uh, it is. Two single ladies that couldn't fit the back of their dresses and had to help each other. That's community right there, okay? Uh, yeah. So, your health. Your health is important to you, right? Okay. You guys are doing a pretty good job with this. I want you to think a little bit more about the things that you think are supposed to be important to you. Money? Who said money? Money. Okay, what else? Time? Reputation? Reputation. Team members? Okay. Think personally. What else is going on in your lives personally? Say that again? Ooh, that's a good one. That's exactly what we're talking about here today. That's the whole point. Yes? Relationship and love. Yeah. Personally? Professionally? All of the above. Right? Um, who, said, who said that word? <laughs> whoop, whoop. Right? Okay, what else? Think about things that in your, yeah, new car. Think, like, think about things in your daily life that you wake up every day and you're like, I have to do this thing, I have to show up for this thing, if people don't see me do this thing, it's a problem. Like, think about all of that external crap that you have going on. In your, so, like, I'll just be super candid right now. Um, so, my son is 12, and he 
graduates, finger quotes, I can't make the quotes because I'm holding the cup, but he graduates sixth grade, which in Denver, he goes on to seventh grade next year, which is middle school, right? Um, I am a single mom, and uh, for some bizarre reason, the universe chose to move his sixth grade commencement speech from Monday to Friday. So now I'm not there. And for me, a little bit of this right goes into the bucket because every other mom in the school is going to think I'm the worst freaking mother on the planet because I'm not there for his, my, you know, my child while he's graduating. Think about stuff like that. What are pressures externally outside of you that you're worried about? Image. Image. Good one. Okay, what else? I don't know who said that. Raise your hand. Yep, being perfect. Again, what we're talking about today. Let's do a couple more. Say it again. A thriving business, right. What else gets you guys? Like, what else are pressures that you really feel inside that you're not living up to? Mm, put them in your sphere. Yes. Now, okay, so now we're getting to the good shit, and now we've, we're, yeah, so keep going. What else? Yep, good one. Other people's opinions, winning an award. That's a really big one, right? Uh, what else? What else do we got? Anything else? Yeah, I mean, the point is it's a lot, right? It's a lot. It's a lot, a lot, a lot. So, you know, so here's the thing. All of those things go into here. These are all of these external pressures that we're feeling. What is left in this cup? There's nothing left in this cup, right? So out of all the things that everyone shouted out, how many of those things were for me or were for you? Not a lot of them, right? Health, maybe. Maybe if you said you do CrossFit, maybe if health is really for you. For me, health is like, I wish I looked better in this dress right now. Not going to lie. Uh, so, you know, like there's not a lot that we poured out of this cup that belonged to me, that was actually for me. And you can see after I poured out all of my time, all of my energy, all of my finances, all of my brain power, all of my love, all of attention, there's nothing left in this cup and I am dry in my soul, in my spirit, in my life, and I feel like shit right? And yet we're wandering around all the time, wondering why we feel so empty, wondering why we feel so taxed, wondering why we feel so horrible. It's why we're struggling to make decisions, why we can't trust ourselves, why we aren't holding the boundaries that we want to, because we have to pay attention to all this stuff that everybody else is asking about us. And it's really why we're not achieving the the success that we want to achieve, honestly. It's why nothing ever feels like enough, because all of this, the time, the love, the attention, the, you know, the work, all of it that you have to, to give from yourself, it isn't infinite. There's only so much of it, and there's only so much of you, and this is the cognitive dissonance of living externally, right, and not for yourself. That's why it hurts, right? We are living out of alignment with our own selves because everything we're driving for, it's for someone else. It's all external goals. And every one of them is emptying us just a little bit more every single time we accomplish one. So what do we do? How do we connect with a driver that actually drives us and fills us back up? We do it by finding what I like to call my big my. So your big my is internal. Your big my is your driver. It's inside of you, and it has nothing to do with anyone else but you. I wish I could, like, kick this over. <laughs> um, your big my takes a lot more time than just going to a class or reading a book or, like, regurgitating some bullshit that somebody else said that makes you look or feel really good. The so my is your driver. It's the quiet, persistent, dark, scary voice that's in your heart and soul it's the like pestering, niggling feeling that you get when you're trying to fall asleep. It's the thing that's inside of you that you never let out because if you were to tell people what's actually in your heart that you want, you would be called selfish. You would be called not holy, and holy enough. You know, it's the thing that you don't want to tell anyone because it sounds stupid or selfish or not big or not important enough. 
Like maybe your my wins you an award, whoever said that over here, but usually not. It's usually not something that other people in our worlds respect. And without even realizing it, you're walking around in cognitive dissonance with your own internal drivers and your own lives. You've been told if you go after your my, you're too driven, you're out of control, you're not pursuing the right things, right? You, you missed your kid's sixth grade commencement speech, you didn't get to the gym, you didn't do it, you didn't get home to spend time, right, with the wife and the kids, you're not perfect, whoever said that, you're not good enough, like that's where all of this bullshit is coming from. This is especially difficult for women because women always put ourselves last. And especially working moms, right, because we don't get the luxury of coming first, not even second or third, right? We get like the last little scraps of what's left over at the end of the day after we've helped everyone else, right? A mom would never, ever allow themselves to have a strong my because either most people in their lives wouldn't accept it or they wouldn't accept it themselves. Your my can be either pleasure or pain-based, and a lot of the times it's kind of a combination of both but the my is 100% for you and you alone. And again, the problem with that external big why is that you're always driving for something that isn't even your freaking driver. Whoever said awards, I really like awards. That is actually a driver of mine. <laughs> um, and that happens for some of us. But, you know, most of us are out there chasing down things that, that don't even matter to us. They don't even affect our lives. You'll never accomplish the things that you can if you don't dive deep and figure out what it is inside your heart that you actually need to go after to make yourself successful. There are people in this room, and, and I'm one of them, who um, everyone would call naturally driven, born with fire in their bellies, they're problem solvers, they never quit, right? They'll climb Mount Everest and they'll ask for another mountain to climb. And um, to the world, if you talk to most of these people, you see them on TV, you see them on social media, they're all out there talking about, you know, I'm doing it because of this big why. I'm doing it because of this. I'm doing it because someone told me to do this. Um, you know, but if you sit with these people and really sit with them, which I've done for over 15 years in, in many, many coaching sessions with other real estate agents, not one of those people is actually truly driven by that stupid external big why. They might say that they are because it's something that we kind of temper to make ourselves approvable or acceptable to the rest of the world, right? Um, Tom Brady said something in lately, uh, recently that I thought was really, really interesting. So he said that uh, there's a torment inside of me and I don't wish that upon my children. And I want my children to have clarity on what and why they're doing, right? He doesn't want them to have the sickness that those of us in this room that are big time drivers have that takes us away from everything that we just poured out on the ground that we can't figure out how to get back into our lives, right? Um, you know, we have all seen Tom Brady. We've seen him on the news. He's out there promoting causes. He's doing really good things. I'm from Denver, so we hate Tom Brady. I can't say anything real nice about him because we're Broncos fans. Someone's whoop in the background. Um, but, you know, uh, people say he's a really good guy, and he, he's probably one of the best guys out there in sports. He's a, he's a very nice man. He does a lot of good work in his community. But that torment and that sickness inside of him, it's not being driven by some external cause. And Tom Brady is super clear on that. He has an internal obsession to succeed, right? He's clear as a bell on what his my is, and he gives not a single fuck about the whole world knowing what Tom Brady wants, right? Like, I was talking to someone about this last night, and yeah, Lauren. Lauren Taylor said, Tom Brady said, what's your favorite Super Bowl ring? And he said, the next one, right? You know, so, um, yeah, exactly, right? So, um, Tom Brady's going full out on what he wants every single day. And there are other people in this room who aren't those natural born drivers. And I honestly would give anything to be one of you guys because that sickness inside, it really does hurt a lot of stuff. And I'm going I'm to talk about that in my life. But um, you guys, and this is tough to hear, 
usually have the biggest bullshit big whys of all time that I have ever heard because you're so concerned about your big why being pretty enough that you aren't honest enough with yourself to go to that deep, dark place inside to figure out what it is in there that's going to push you to get you to where you actually need to go. That's what separates the insanely driven from those who kind of just aren't. They're not clear on their mission. They're not clear on what it is for themselves. Um, you know, over 15 years of, of coaching other real estate agents and listening to why they can't perform to the level that they want and why can't they hold their boundaries, why can't they stop working, um, you know, why don't they have the results, why do they feel so awful all the time, why is everything a mess, none of it's working, almost every single time it's because they're in internal conflict with themselves and they're ignoring their own big my. And I know this is really heavy and it's a, it's a big time paradigm shift, but um, I kind of want to walk you through what I thought my big why was and the difference between what I've realized my big my is and how life changing this has been for me. So the last time I did a big why workshop, I sat in a room with, it was probably about 300 people, right? And they give you this notebook and it walks you through all these exercises on how to pick it. It's like there's quadrants or circles, I can't remember, and it's like draw your family, draw your friends, draw the physical things, you know, the cars and things that you want. Put it all down on a piece of paper and like where all of that kind of intersects is where your purpose is, right? And, I, and I'm sitting in this room and everybody's calling out, like I said, these unbelievable, like heart-wrenching, amazing reasons for why they're doing things. And I was sitting there going, I would love to cure childhood cancer, right? Like it's not like I'm a callous person. It's just None of it over all of these 20 years that I've been in this business, I've never settled on a big why that's made any difference to me. So this is what I wrote down word for word the last time that I sat in that room. And then, by the way, at the end of it, they make you get up and they uh, make you read it to the whole room. So if you get up there and you say, like, I want a Lamborghini, you can see what I mean. Like, you've got to come up with something that is more external than that. So this is what I wrote. To impact as many people as I can for the kingdom, to support and love as many people as I can emotionally and financially, to take care of everyone that I'm blessed by God to have in my world, to show my son how important hard work and integrity are, and to show him how to be a good man. Like, that's, like, really beautiful. Like, everyone probably clapped, and they were all like, woohoo! You know, it's meaningful, it's happy, it's honorable, it's very respectable, and it definitely has a purpose. And I want all of those things. I'm not saying that I don't want those things. I'm just saying that none of that has been the thing that has woken me up for the last 20, 21 years and pulled my ass out of bed on the days when I've gotten the shit kicked out of me and I've been beaten down and the market is hard and I'm writing the 37th offer for that buyer or my sellers get the fifth termination in a row or I'm worried about my finances or my bills, right? Like, it's just not what's, what's driving me. Um, and it's become really hard to be dishonest about that because you're freaking empty, right? Like, you're out there doing all of this work and you have no idea what for. Um, you know, like Tom Brady, it's the obsession to succeed in me that I'm looking for. That big why that I made up, it's like 100% lovely, it's 100% all external, and it's like 100% never driven me to get a single freaking thing done. Um, it's shiny and it's noble, and everyone that I ever said it to, like if I walked up here and said that, you guys would be like, oh, clap, it's beautiful, right? But after a lot of work on myself, what I, what I really realized was um, that every bit of that big why was, was not for myself, and it was coming from some internal need to prove to my peers and to the world and to, to people who love me that I was big enough or I was good enough or I was bright enough, I was smart enough, I was worth something, I was worth the awards, I was worth being at the top of the charts, I was worth being in this room here with you guys right now, like all of that stuff, right? Um, it was to make me look like a good mom and a good wife and a big business owner and a good community supporter. It was built to make me be all the things that I thought that I was supposed to be and it was me packaging myself up in this super pretty package that was acceptable to everybody else in order for me to feel love and worthiness and to meet everyone else's metric of success. Um, and the crazy thing is that chasing that big why like almost ruined my life and I'm a super cautionary tale on this. Um, it broke my marriage. Uh, it took me away from my kid. 
you know, I'm, I'm just a mother of one, and it's so cheesy, but you really, you get, like, what's the thing? You get 18 summers with them, right? So I'm on 12. I'm bad at math. How many do I have left? Um, <laughs> you know, but it, it took me away from all those precious years. You know, I missed Easter egg hunts and uh, school functions and, and all kinds of things, um, and it consumed me, like, literally consumed me to kill myself to meet that level of success that everyone thought that I should have. I couldn't hold any boundaries, right? Because I was constantly chasing for it. The client calls at midnight, you gotta pick up the phone and answer it. Client wants to see a house at three o'clock when you're supposed to be at the ball field, you gotta go, right? Um, And then three years ago, I became a single mom and you know, like they say, necessity is the mother of all invention and and life just had to change. And it was a huge blessing for me. Um, But I'm, you know, I'm hoping that you guys, you guys learn that lesson before something like that happens to you. There's that old Native American story about the two wolves, right? Everyone has two wolves inside of them. Um, you know, the dark side of the wolf is, is the ego. It's the one that wants to impress people. Um, it's the one that is after being the biggest and the baddest, the alpha, the pack leader. And then you have the light wolf. And, um, you know, the light wolf is, is after uh, love and peace and honoring itself, right? And I realized after a long time in this business that that whole time I've been feeding the wrong wolf. Um, You know, I was chasing this big, huge, holy, big Y to the world that was sucking every single ounce of my life out of me. This business eats you alive. I don't understand why it is. Like, lawyers aren't like that. Doctors aren't like that. You know, there's something really bizarre about this business. I think it's a a lot of the culture of comparison, right? Like in all the charts and how much is your GCI and how many numbers and units did you do and all of that. But, um, you know, I mean, I was dry. Like just like this water bottle right here. Like I was totally and completely dry. I was burned out. I was exhausted. I was restless. I was in pain. I felt completely alone. I, I couldn't win. Like I just kept climbing up the stupid freaking mountain and my numbers were getting bigger and bigger every single year and I still felt like I couldn't win. Um, and for so long, I just couldn't figure out why. And, and everything that I did, you know, making that top 100 agents in the country and, um, you know, micro, micromanaging my team at this crazy hyper level to make sure that they were performing correctly and, um, you know, buying things that I didn't need and walking and talking a certain way and posturing. And, you know, there was a year where we did $150 million in volume. We did 351 units. And I did 299 of them by myself with one transaction coordinator. Don't do that. And it was all just to show, you know, the world that, it, that I had, like, the big enough why that I was, uh, I was worthy. And then when I got up to the top of the mountain, it wasn't anything like I thought it would be, right? Like, it was cold. It was lonely. It was snowing. I was all by myself. And there was a long, 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 long freaking way to fall. And the last three years of my life have been, you know, uh, kind of a little bit like Wayne talked about, right? Like sometimes you hit that pit and it's really hard to dig back out of. Um, and then all of a sudden, though, the thing is it's a gift. Like hyper, hyper clearly, all of a sudden, I could see how every decision that I made that wasn't for me, that was external, was affecting my entire life. You know, it's why I allowed people to walk all over me and then still say, hey, you're not lying down flat enough, like you're a bump in the road, lay down flat, right? Like, it's why I was in pain all the time, even though I had every single thing I ever wanted. I had all the toys, I had the big house, I had all the things, right? Um, Because the thing is, like, you can chase the most noble and beautiful big why your whole entire life, and it will never affect your life the way that something for you will. So you've got to do the deep work and identify your my. Your mind's the real driver when you strip away all the other bullshit, and it's where you find what is really for you, and when you get there and you find it, then you feed the ever-living shit out of it, and you're going to watch your life explode. My personal big my at this point is to honor and love myself and, uh, you know, to do the things that make sense for me and to hold the boundaries on the things that don't. Um, and here's the thing, guys. Like, I still smash the shit out of my goals. Like, I'm, I am 20% more profitable than I've ever been in my entire career, right? So I am still extremely driven. I'm just driven by what I want. I'm not driven by the need to please anybody else. 
Um, I'm not driven by the, the need to like create things that I don't even care about anymore. Um, you know, when I stopped worrying about fulfilling that, that big why, you know, when I thought that people would be angry about it, it actually opened up all this space in my life for really beautiful and amazing things to come in. So the power you find when you give yourself permission to live your life for yourself, it's really going to change everything. But I, I do need you to hear two things. Like, first of all, I'm not saying don't go out and do good things for your community. That's not what I'm saying at all, right? Like, in fact, the more you know your, your my and, and the more you know the reason why you're doing the things you're doing, the more good you'll be able to do because you're going to be in control of your life, your mental health, your happiness, your power, your love, your finances, right? And I'm also not saying play small. Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. I am the Tom Brady. I am still consumed by success. I'm just, you know, I want you to play, and I want you to play full out all the time. I just want you to play on, on your terms. This is your game, right? Like, we are entrepreneurs. We don't work for other people. This is your game. You do it the way that you want. Um, I, in contrast, want to talk about the mys that I've heard with coaching clients. Um, you know, I've heard all kinds of things like, I want a McLaren. I want a trophy wife that has, like, what's this or mix a lot? Someone literally said it. What's the measurement? You know what I'm talking about. But, but only if she's 5'4", right? Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, like, someone, someone literally said that to me, right? Like, uh, someone said, I want a Louis Vuitton bag. I want to go order a car, right, with everything that I want. And I want this house. I want to shut my phone off every night at 6 p.m. I want to go on vacation for three weeks, and I want to drop my phone in the ocean so I don't have to talk to a single human being. Um, what's really scared me is the last two years, the mys that I've been hearing from people are, are things like, I want to get out of the house for the first time in a week, right? Like, I want to get to the gym for the first time in two years. I want to make enough money to see somebody because I feel like crap and I need an antidepressant. Um, you know, it, it, it's, if you're listening and you're getting anything out of this, you might feel like a weird, uncomfortable energy shift because, like, these aren't things that we can talk about. Like, we're not going to talk about, um, you know, the fact that in our team meeting that we're, we're driving for that Lamborghini, we're driving for that McLaren, we're driving for the girl with the measurements, right? Um, because, like, what is that when it's compared with all these people that are out there talking about being Mother Teresa and saving the freaking world, right? Like, you're not going to go into your team meeting and be like, guys, everyone on this team today, we are going to work extra hard this week. We're going to make 100 extra calls each person on this team because I need to buy a mountain chalet and a beach house by the end of the year. Like, you're just, you're not, you're not going to do it. But, you know, self-care and, and positive mental health and a happy life mean that you cannot feel bad for prioritizing yourself or putting your own oxygen mask on first or keeping, like, enough inside of you guys that you can still fill up other people. Like, how the hell are you supposed to fill up anyone else in your life if you are completely dry and empty? So you've got to come into alignment with yourself, and you've got to honor yourself enough so that you can be a whole, healed amazing person who can go after every single my you've ever had and change the world with what you have inside of you. Um, you know, my, my greatest hope leaving here today is that you guys soak in all of this stuff from these amazing speakers uh, that are talking to us about some really pretty candid and crazy stuff. It's been pretty amazing to listen to. And I also hope that you go home and you fuck your big why. And you sit down and you figure out what it is. Whoever said sex, thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, so you go, you know, you go home and you figure out what it is that's actually driving you. Like, how do you get this stuff back up into your cup? How do you become a full person again? Right? Um, the person who stands in their own power is in control of their life. Right? And the way that you do that is by having complete clarity on what it is that you want and what you need. I want no more bullshit, fluffy goals from you guys, right? I want you to really go home and think about what is keeping you from living the life that you actually want to live. And listen, we have other people in our lives. We have spouses, we have children, we have friends, we have family. I'm clearly not telling you to stop prioritizing them or abandoning them. I'm just saying to you guys, stop being this person. This is the reason that you're not getting to where you want to go. Because coming from this place, you have nothing left to give. You can be that guy that does a miracle morning, and you can wake up at 4.30 every day, but if you're starting from this place, 
you're in trouble already. You're never going to get there, right? You know, I gave up this uh, big seated need that came from all the trauma and all the stuff in my life to win and be the best and do all the things. And for some people, that's going to be your big my, right? Like, um, I'm not going to say it, well, I'm not going to say it out loud, but I remember sitting in one of those big why workshops when I was like hyper, hyper competitive and all these people were writing down these really lovely things and what I wrote down was like really, really, really competitive. And again, I was like, I can't. I can't say that. I heard a guy once, and this is a true story. You want me to say it? No, I'm not going to say it. I'll tell you what I heard this guy say. So everyone else is like, you know, this one woman was like, I want to go to Disneyland. I want to take my kids on a trip to Disneyland this year. And this guy stands up, and he goes, I want to drink the blood of my enemies from cups made of their skulls. That's how much I want to win. Like, that's some Tom Brady cup full of shit, right, you guys? Um, you know, like, that, that guy has a very clear focus on what he wants in life. And so I'm not saying don't be competitive, because for a lot of that, that still is what it is. Like, a lot of us are sitting in here today. I know I do it, and I'm like, I would like to beat you, and I would like to beat you, and I would like to beat you, and I would like you to fall off the map because you're kicking my ass, right? You know, so it's not that it's not a competition thing. It's just get rid of all the crap that's holding you back from, from doing, you know, what, what you need and want to do. Um, you know, at, at this point in my life, really focusing on my my, things have completely changed for me. I've got amazing relationships with my friends and my family, my son, he just turned 12 last Saturday. We're best friends. We're adventure buddies. We go all over the world together. You know, setting aside all the bullshit that belonged to other people that I thought that I needed in my life made space that I didn't even know that I had. It's, it's crazy powerful. And that's what I want for every one of you guys. I want you guys to make every penny you've, you've ever wanted. I want you to get the McLaren. I want you to drink the blood out of whatever it is. Cups made of the stuff. If that's your thing, man, go do it. I want you to have the best sex of your life, right? I want you to be home with your children. Like, let's stop posturing. Like, let's stop saying shit like, I'm dominating and I'm winning at life, but you haven't seen your wife or children in three freaking weeks, right? Like, let's stop pretending that everything is okay. I want you to change your lives. I want you to change the lives of everyone around you, but I want you to go home and I want you to do it for you and I want you to do it on your terms. And I want you to get to the top of that mountain surrounded by people that you love in a way that you're proud of and not alone, right? And not that cautionary tale. And that's how we change the world, right? We change it by owning our real, authentic, true selves and, and being really brave enough to go after the things that we know that we want and deserve. So, you know, I think you take some time tonight. You're going to absorb a ton of knowledge. And uh, you got to go and, and put all the stuff, like the fancy bells and whistles, things that you hear aside, and go after whatever it takes to fill this back up so that you guys can go home to your families, go home to your teams, go home to your lives, and fucking win.